This morning we are greatly concerned about what has occurred in this neighborhood, not only for our officers, but the residents that call this home. Our community has been shocked by the events that occurred this morning, um, and I will go into that in a few minutes about uh, how it all transpired. But as you can understand, it's an active investigation, um, and the investigation will be turned over to the Adams County Critical Incident Team, the 17th Judicial District, in which we've been in contact with them, and there's also investigators on scene. Currently, the status of our officers, they're at two different hospitals, and they are in stable condition with non-life-threatening wounds, uh, and we're blessed for that information. Our officers were dispatched up into the neighborhood at approximately 8 a.m. this morning. Um, they were called by a citizen who was out walking their dog, who had walked by the house in question and had believed that they had heard some popping sounds to what they believed was gunfire, as well as some light smoke inside the residence. They immediately called police and we responded up here to the scene and we immediately uh, started surrounding the house and trying to make contact with anybody inside. Originally, we weren't able to get in contact with anybody inside, but then we did, as we went through the neighborhood and we talked to more residents, we also had some of them confirm that they did hear gunshots earlier in the morning from inside the house. We don't believe at that point any gunshots were fired outside the home. Our officers, as they were on scene at approximately about 9.05, 9.06 a.m., um, a male did present himself from the house with what we believe is a long rifle and began firing at our officers on scene. Two of our officers uh, did take, take either, either shrapnel or gunfire. They're still being evaluated at the hospital and exactly what that is. But they were both wounded with non-life threatening wounds and transported to the uh, emergency medical centers in the area. Um, our officers at the time in which they were engaged with gunfire did return gunfire. Um, and we believe that we did strike the suspect who then retreated back into his residence. Within about 15 to 20 minutes, our uh, mutual SWAT team with uh, Thornton North Gwen SWAT team arrived on scene and we were able to deploy a drone to actually start seeing inside the house. Once we actually confirmed that we were able to see the suspect inside the house, our SWAT team made entry and that we did confirm that there was an adult male inside and he was deceased. I'll take a few questions if you guys have any questions. I, I'm sorry. Was he the only person inside the home? Yes, ma'am. He was the only occupant inside the home at the time. Do you have a name of the suspect? I, a name of the suspect? Uh, we're not releasing it yet until we can get confirmation. But you believe this is someone that owned the house or lived in this house? We believe that he is a resident of the home. That's correct. Do you have any idea of who he was possibly shooting at or if those popping sounds that were reported were indeed gunfire? We do believe they were gunfire. Obviously, the investigation will happen, turning it over to the 17th Judicial District. Our SWAT team made a quick sweep inside the house. Um, we did have paramedics go in there and confirm that no medical was needed. So at this point, until they can get in there and process it as a crime scene, and then we'll know if how many shots were fired in the house and if it was truly what the residents had heard was gunfire. It's unknown at this point. Which hospital are the officers at? Uh, I don't have that information. I don't have that information. I apologize. I haven't been given that. Uh, I haven't been given any of that information. And what we plan to do is, I, I plan to we will we will have a further press release this afternoon as more information becomes available, as the uh, investigators are able to go in and actually process the scene, and we're able to learn a little bit more about the uh, individual involved. We'll be able to provide you guys more information exactly trying to put the pieces together. You mentioned a drone. Talk to me a little bit about how crucial that technology was. Is that infrared or is the camera on there? Our, our drones are capable of really anything. Um, really the infrared as far as any type of night vision obviously wasn't used at this point or I don't believe it was used just due to the daylight. 
But yes, we use them because um, obviously when we're dealing with situations like this, we have to keep in mind that we might be dealing with somebody that is mentally unstable. Um, we don't know that to be the fact up here, but we do, uh, we do have precautions and we did bring our co-responders up on scene to make sure that we could communicate with the individual if that was the case. But in utilizing drones and stuff, it keeps our guys safe that we can actually get a good visual inside a home prior to making our SWAT entry. Uh, I don't have that information, but it's very possible upon entry that they did use some distraction device. Um, due to the nature of the exchange of gunfire, we did have Flight for Life come on scene as a precautionary measure that if the individual was down, that we could immediately get him into the, the uh, helicopter and get him to a medical facility as quick as possible. You know, we've done a shelter in place, so our cursory, uh, our cursory talking to the neighbors was just to see what they've heard at this point. We'll be going through and doing a neighborhood canvas and talking to neighbors further to see what there might be as far as history or any type of other calls for service at that house. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to report um, effectively, efficiently, and certainly accurately. Uh, we will have more information to come shortly. We'll release. Uh, a news release as soon as more information becomes available chief uh, chief reeves will be making his way soon here to go visit those officers um, stay tuned please to our, our x account or formerly twitter account thank you all right we were just getting an update from greg reeves he is the interim police chief for thornton police and again we were given an update about uh, the shooting investigation that happened early this morning off of york and 160th and thornton we know two officers were shot non-life threatening injuries and they were taken to the hospital yeah and we do know that as far as what was happening inside that home that initial call was in the 16,000 block of columbine and they did say that officers returned gunfire into that home they believed that they struck the suspect they said that they used a drone to get a visual inside the home before they enter just to make sure it was safe and have a better trajectory of where they should go swat did enter and there was a deceased adult male in the home and that is the only person that was in the home at the time. And again, there are still questions about the history of this suspect, what led up to it. We know that there was a large police presence this morning. One neighbor even said that she saw smoke coming from the house as well. Mm -hmm. This all started around 8.50 mm -hmm. this morning, and 90s reporter Brianna Fernandez was able to get out on scene very early and give us updates throughout. And now you're going to update us again because we just heard from that interim ch chief. Yeah, Corey, Erica, we just heard the latest from the interim chief. Um, I know that uh, we know one suspect is dead. We know it's an adult male. Officers are expected to be okay. We know that press conference is happening at 161st and Columbine. That's where we have another crew there on scene. We also have several other crews that are gathering more information from neighbors to see if, hey, has there been any altercations there before, any noise, any shots fired that you've heard in the past? Now, we know that officers returned gunfire and they used drones as visuals before entering the home. That is the latest from Thornton Police. That press conference was very, very short. Again, so we're standing right now at the intersection of York and 161st Avenue uh, Street, I should say, or Avenue, I should say. And that's where we have seen a lot of uh, officers come in. Uh, it's died down a lot since we last spoke to you guys. Um, but again, that is the latest here out of Thor. And I'm going to send it back to you guys because it looks like I'm having some trouble uh, hearing you guys. Um, so let me, I'll just send it back to you. So much. We really appreciate your reporting again. Brianna got out there within minutes of that initial tweet from Thornton police. And when she got out there at 905, there wasn't much of a scene and we watched it quickly develop this morning. Yeah, when they got there, they heard the gunfire mm -hmm. and then the gunfire did die down. But then that's when we saw a lot of officers getting on scene. We saw SWAT get there. We saw CBI. We mm -hmm. saw a lot of officers in tactical gear. Right. And this lasted for about an hour. And again, we do know that there was a suspect. He was mm -hmm. shot. He went back inside the home. SWAT was able to enter the home. They used a drone, mm -hmm. which is a way to keep officers safe. And they were able to identify one adult male dead inside the home, the only person inside the home. Mm -hmm.